Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melted Production, and today I'm going to show you how you can use M Auto Dynamic EQ to create a pitch tracked EQ. In other words, an EQ that will follow the pitch of your audio material. So let's get started. So one of the examples I'm going to use, actually the only example I'm going to use, is uh, this bass. So I'll let you hear it quickly. Okay, so it's like a normal bass sound, and this is a synth, and normally with a synth I can just use a filter or something to emphasize different parts. But if it's not in its audio material, like a guitar or an actual bass, I can't actually pitch track it like that. But with M Auto Dynamic EQ, we can, so I'll show you how to do it. So we have M Auto Dynamic EQ open here. So you see this, let's use band 4 since it's already open, and let's assign this to a modulator. So here it says mod 1, I'm just going to click here and... Click and learn, move it back and forth like this a little bit. Now close it, or turn record off, and let's open it. Now see, see here we have an LFO. If we turn it on, you see it's moving according to the LFO. And also you'll notice like here I had gain, and that's because I moved it up and down a little bit, which controls the gain of the bands, but I don't want that. So I'm just going to click this trash can icon here, get rid of it. Now at the top, you see it has normal, follower, envelope, random, and pitch. I want to be on pitch. Now from here, I could just leave it as, as it is, but it's probably not going to work, so we'll let you hear it. You're thinking, hey, why is it not pa tracking the pitch? And the reason is, it's because in here in the detector settings, the minimum recognized is 50, and it's playing below 50, as you can see. So I need to move this down. So I'll move this all the way down to 20. And for this, I'll move this up a little bit, maybe 2,000. For the bass, it's probably not important to move the max recognized up. But if you're doing something else like vocals or something or, who knows, flute, I guess, you might want to move that up a little bit. Uh, so here, just make sure if you're thinking, hey, it's not moving, move the minimum recognized from 50 down to 20 for bass. So let's hear it now or watch it now. Okay, so now it's moving, but you think, hey, it's not moving very far. And the reason is, is because of the values here. So another thing I want to do is change this value all the way to the bottom, 20, and the max all the way to the top. Now let's do this one more time, and it should work. So you think, okay, that's cool but it's not doing anything so let's go into bands here and let's just move this up so let's say if I wanted to let's drop the game by six decibels and we can change the cue here like this now let's hear it okay that seems pretty good. There's things I could do with that. But I think normally for a bass, I probably wouldn't want to cut that low end like that. If I did, I'd just use a low pass filter. But something I might want to do is I might want to increase that first harmonic. So I might think, hey, you know, it's uh, going to be played on small speakers. So I want that octave up from the like, low bass, the sub bass, from the fundamental. So I want that to be up so people can actually hear it if they're listening to it on like uh, earbuds or something. So I'm going to go back into mod 1 here where it says pitch and you notice where it says shift here. So I'm going to shift it up one octave. So instead of down here and the fundamental, it'll play the octave up and follow that like this. Actually, let me turn the gain up also. Here we go. So you can see that makes quite a big difference with the tone. I could do the same thing and shift the semitones up. What is it? Uh, seven semitones? Is that the fifth, I think? Okay, so let's hear that. And do the same thing. I could go two octaves up or whatever. So 
So you can see how that might be useful. I can also use the auto tune feature in here if I think it's a little bit out of tune. In this case, I probably wouldn't want to because I want it to be right on the pitch. So if my bass is out of tune, I want this to be out of tune with it. But that's just something you can do. And you can also adjust the threshold, the speed, uh, stabilization, etc., which is sometimes useful. But let's get into something else. So something else I might want to do here. Let's move this back to the fundamental. And another cool thing we have in here is this harmonics. So here, if you look, when I move it up, looks like it's creating little bumps. If I increase the Q, you can see it more clearly. It's like, oh, okay, this is actually using the harmonics. And if I move it all the way up, you see it has all these. I probably want to decrease this. It's wasting CPU. So let's do like four or so, like that. Now, this is cool, but let's say, let's say I don't want them all going up like this. If I change this, the harmonics from positive to negative, you see it kind of like, oh, it inverts them, which is interesting. But let's say like, ah, I don't want the fundamental to be, you know, increased and then the first harmonic to be decreased. I want it the opposite. So I just go into the gain and I can either do it like this by turning it upside down. Or if I think, oh, this was perfect, just hit invert gain and it does that for me. So now I can do this and I can get a different sound. So if I think like, ah, there's too much sub bass, but I want that first harmonic to be increased. I can do something like this. So let's hear this. So you see there, it's tracking that and it's increasing these upper harmonics. So that can be like a useful tool if you want to make your sounds heard on a smaller speaker or headphones, etc. So I hope this gave you some ideas on what you can do. Of course, you can use this for other things besides uh, bass. Uh, if you're trying to do something like really fast, like some shredding guitar solo or some like crazy violin run or something like that, it may not work so good on that, but for long sustained notes, it definitely will. So you can try this on bass, vocals, etc. And I think you'll get some uh, interesting and uh, hopefully useful results. So if you have any questions, leave those down below. Give me a thumbs up if you like this. Uh, check out all the other plugins at meltaproduction.com. And until next time, see you.